Hello, hello, guys. Hello, hello. Hi, everyone. Hope you're doing well. Hopefully you have volume. <laughs> I was fighting my system just a minute ago on the volume. So hopefully you can hear me and see me. So, hello, Molly Ann and Claudette and Janet and Beverly and Ann and Donna. Oh my goodness, and Anne. Hello, Carol and Linda and Letitia. Hello, Pat. Glad to have power back after two days. Oh my gosh, Pat. Oh my goodness. Hello, Denise. Oh, thank you. So you can hear me, yeah? Because <laughs> again, I was having some uh, issues with my, my microphone thing. So anyway. <sighs> It's nice to be back. Thank you, Cindy. I appreciate that. Um, hello, Linda. Yeah, so I I did my hair. <laughs> Again, I kind of refreshed it at one. And my husband goes, when are you going live? And I said, at four. And he goes, you know your hair is going to be flat. But <laughs> um, hello, Faye. It's so funny that you wrote that because whenever I do my signature or I'm doing an email, Oftentimes, my fat finger will do dandy instead of sandy. <laughs> so, oh, wonderful. Thank you, Donna. Hello, Virginia. Hello, Debbie Sears. Hi, you guys. I'm so excited to be back. It um, has been a very busy couple of weeks um, and being gone at NAMTA. If you missed that, I shared videos and pictures from that event, which was amazing. Um, lots of new products, lots of fun things. Watching you in the women's final. Oh, I know. Okay, so Nancy, who are you rooting for? I have to say, I am not tired of <laughs> Caitlin Clark yet. I hope Iowa wins. So anyway, <laughs> no problem, Faye. I do it all the time, seriously. In fact, sometimes I have to go back and make sure that I didn't say dandy instead of sandy. So, hello, Marlene Fudge. Hello, Linda Safranco and Monty. Saw some of your videos. Yeah, it was amazing. Um, the thing is, the very first time I went, I went with Dynasty and I demoed in their booth, but I had a lot of time to walk around and look at all the new products, you know, meet people, da 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 da. Um, in the decor booth, I'm pretty much there. I mean, I am there to work. So the the time that I can get away when things are a little slow, um, I will go off and do lives. And I'll be honest, the last day I was so tired. <laughs> uh, and I was taking pictures of all the shoes. And I looked at Veronica and I said, I'm not going live. I'm tired. But anyway, doing all the pictures of the shoes and then just walking the show, I got so inspired um, that I wanted to share it with you guys. So if you've missed that, you can watch it on my Santa Tear Designs Facebook page, um, also on my regular page, but I am going to upload it to YouTube. So, so all y'all that don't do Facebook, you'll get that. So, oh, thank you, Nancy. I appreciate that. Hello, Janet. Watch the game. <laughs> no problem. Um, I, I totally understand. I mean, the game, it's a big game, right? I, I don't know that there's been more exposure for women's basketball um, since I, I can't even remember, which is awesome. Um, hello, Chantal. Hello, Karen. Oh, goodness. Um, oh, you're welcome, Peg. I always love to kind of bring you guys along when I can. Um, and again... <laughs> I was like, oh God, I'm so tired. And I know I said it on the video several times, but those shows are grueling and as much fun as it is to see everything, um, I have a canker sore, as much fun as it is to see everything, um, it's also, it's very taxing. And because I'm talking all day, I don't want to hear my voice. But at the same time, I love to bring you guys in when I can and share those things, um, especially when they're art related. So Anyway, the shoes were so amazing, right, Beverly? Totally agree. If you guys missed those, you can go to Dynasty Brush website or um, Facebook page and check those out or the videos I shared. I am going to do a compilation and put them on my YouTube channel as well. So, you know, just time, 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 time. <laughs> 
Hello, Gloria. So good to see you on. Um, it, it was a great show, Janet. Yes, the funny thing is the first time I went, I thought it was huge. And everyone's like, oh my gosh, this is nothing. It used to be three levels. Um, and then NAMTA and Creativation, CHA, ACI, all the names it's been. So the craft and the fine art merged. Um, and I will just tell you, I thought this show was amazing, the way they put everything together, uh, the fun things they had shared for us to do, or planned for us to do, like going to the, the warehouse where the Mardi Gras floats are. If you didn't see those pictures, it was creepy, but it was so fun and cool at the same time. Um, so, yeah, it, it was a lot of fun. And I've gotten some... Um, messages and stuff. It's not a consumer show, but if you are a designer, creative, blogger, painter, creative, whatever, professional, you can join. So if you go to NAMTA, N-A-M-T-A dot org and see if you qualify to join and you can go. The next one is in Seattle. So next April, Seattle, hopefully I will be there. I'll be there one way or the other. <laughs> Let's just say that. Um, yes, the shoes were so awesome. So many different styles, so many different takes. Um, and what I loved about D Dynasty doing this was kind of like the artist journey, you know, getting your very first paintbrush or the first time you were introduced to painting at all. Um, and then us putting those inspirations and things into our design. Um, I, I did love mine. Let's see if I've got a picture. I have a picture of mine right there. It's not finished. <laughs> this one was the finished one. Um, but there were so many amazing, amazing designs. And it was nice to see um, artists like Deb Antonek and Tracy Morrow that haven't had, they've not been in the States since the pandemic. Um, and so it was nice to have their stuff there. Emery Oak, Jilly Bean. Donna Harcourt, Tracy Weinzaffel, I mean, Marco Aguilar. I mean, the list goes on and on um, of all these amazing shoes. So again, I am going to put a little compilation together and post it because they were to die for. Um, I am actually doing a Zoom with my membership group um, on the shoes. So... It's either going to be this month or it's going to be the next Zoom, but we're definitely doing shoes. I'm going to share how I painted mine with my group. Um, so if you're interested in that at all, let me just point you right here. <laughs> you can go to my website, sandymcteardesigns.com, and find out about my membership group. The last week of April and the first week of May, my membership group will be officially open, um, and you can join at the current price because after that the price goes up um but i will be doing some lives the 29th that well i'm going to do a live the 28th here um on my um page and also youtube and then also on monday tuesday which are the last two days of march and then through i think probably the weekend um not saturday well maybe saturday the first weekend in May, I have a Zoom class. But anyway, I'm going to be sharing a whole bunch of things with you guys that we do in my membership group um, and would love for you guys to come and join us. Um, aw, thank you, Sandy. Yay for the Zoom shoes, right? <laughs> yes. Well, again, it's a great membership group. You will not be. Oh, thank you, Janet. The, you know, the thing is, I love to share with them before I share anywhere else. Um, they get a better discount than anywhere else um, on my website. So anyway, okay, real quick, let's take care of some um, housekeeping. So on YouTube and on Facebook, the first people that commented on um, the thing going live, so you might have been here first, but if you didn't comment, your name wasn't there. Um, so on YouTube is Janet Roach and on Facebook, Donna Baker. Ladies, message me and let me know what free e-packet you want on my website, all right? Um, and I will get that sent to you today or tomorrow. Okay. Hello, Holly and Heather. <laughs> Hello from Buffalo. So, guys, what is the weather like where you're at? It's 75 right here, right now, in middle Georgia. 
If any of you have been thinking about joining Sandy's group, go for it. She's fabulous. She teaches us so much and is always full of inspiration. Thank you, Molly Ann. Hi, Chris. Good to see you on. Okay, so on the last live I did, which seems like a year ago, <laughs> um, but it was this little fun, um, my spring duckling. So the original went to my sweet friend, uh, Christina, and it actually went to her son, Theo. Um, he loves everything ducks. So it was the sweetest thing she shared with me. She gave it to him and he hung it by his bed. Um, anyway, but if you missed this live, you can go on my YouTube channel and find the lesson there and the e-packet on my website, okay? But I had three giveaways during that live. <clears throat> is 51 and raining, 64 in, <laughs> in Indiana. I just hope that everybody tomorrow through the path of the total totality, is that what it's called, of the eclipse, that y'all get to see it. Um, I have <laughs> a group with my membership group. I have a lesson at 2 o'clock, and I know it's going to encroach on some of that time. But anyway, 50 degrees in Connecticut. Oh, and many of you guys up there had an um, earthquake, right? <laughs> scary, scary. Um, Aw, thank you. Okay, feels like winter here in southern New Brunswick. I'm sorry, Faye. I know, so many places up north, you guys still have snow. Sorry. Okay, so the last live, I had three giveaways, and they were for brushes. My dear sweet friends at Dynasty Brush gave these to them, gave these to me to give away. <laughs> my brain and my tongue need to connect. Um, so one of my favorite size half inch stencil brush, stencil pro, a three eighths angle brush, which I think I could probably paint any project, all projects with that brush, a half inch faux squirrel angle brush, and one of my new favorite size, um, black gold flat angle, sh or it's a flat shader. It's a flat, okay? Anyway, those four, same, going out for all three people. The first name that I drew, Letitia. It's on a, um, a clear, never felt it, although others in the town. Oh, um, hello, Kathy. Supposed to be 99 here for the eclipse, 99%. Oh, Cindy, I hope you see it. And I hope you guys get a lot of really cool pictures. So um, no problem, no apology, Debbie. I'm glad you're here. Okay, so Letitia, I have your info. I will get it sent to you. The same set of brushes and the next name that came up on the wheel. So basically what I do, guys, is when you watch, I am me, myself, and I <laughs> doing these lives. I don't have a Renee or anybody else to put all the names in. Um, but on my Facebook page and my YouTube channel, I put all those names onto the wheel. If you like, comment, share. If you're a new subscriber to my YouTube channel. Um, and so then I pick or spin the wheel, do those names, write them down, and do it on the next live. I will have a next live next Sunday, um, and I'll have more giveaways this week for you guys. Some really cool, three really cool Happy Mail Prezies going out. Okay, so the second name that popped up is Karen Knox. Karen, message me your details and let me know where I can ship those brushes to you at. And then the third one, my sweet friend over in Alabama, who often comes to Georgia, Virginia Mann. So, Virginia, message me. Actually, you don't need to. Just let me know where you want me to mail them to. Are you in Alabama or are you in Georgia? <laughs> right now, and I'll get those shipped off to you. Um, anyway, fantastic brushes, my favorite. Um, I'm going to move those so they don't get messed up. <clears throat> Thank you, Debbie. Thanks for sprinkling. I appreciate it, right? I think it's a killer set of brushes. Those are like my go-to Love every single one of them. So, hello, Wendy Young. Let me just tell you those bees, Kevin's bees. Oh, my gosh. I hope I am on your page to um, bid or win some of those. Um, won't be able to watch tomorrow's lesson. Oh, no problem, Diane. I hope everything goes well with his surgery. Y'all are so sweet. 64 degrees in Virginia. 
<laughs> You're okay, Virginia. I'll mail them to you in Alabama. <laughs> um, too funny. Okay, guys, let's get started. So I love this new design I did. It is my little spring um, skeep. So if you're not familiar with, they're usually woven and baskets. Um, it's the little bee home, right? So, aw, thanks, Patricia. Okay, guys, so um, anyway, so I cut this on my laser. I have the set, and I have to say, I put it out there on, when did I put it out there? Friday? Thursday? No, Friday. Um, and so the first 20 people, I said, we're going to get two extra bees, because I honestly think they would make amazing uh, random act of kindness pins. So I'm just going to tell you, we hit 20 <laughs> very well into Friday, and so all the ones I've packaged have two free bees. So if you order it all this week, then those are going to go out with two free little uh, bees for you, okay? After next week, it's back to just the bee skeep, skeep and one bee, okay? Um, and then I also have it bundled where you can get eight. Again, a, those would make great random act of kindness pins. Um, and I think that's $6 or something. But y'all, don't forget to use that discount code. A-R-T, all capitals, on my website to get an additional discount, unless you're in my membership group, and then you get the best discount ever. So, uh, thank you, Heather. I've already got yours packaged up and ready. All the orders have been packaged, um, packed up, and my husband is gonna go first thing in the morning and ship those out. On that note, let me just tell you guys, for my regulars, you guys know that, um, my website and most websites ship by weight or item. I hate, I dislike paying or overpaying for shipping. So what I do, which is an extra step and more work for me, but I don't want you guys to have to pay extra for shipping if it doesn't cost extra. So yes, my website's a little different. It shows there's no shipping cost, but on everything it says shipping is not free on my front page, on your invoice that you get when you order. I only invoice for the actual shipping cost that it costs me to ship to you. No package and handling, nothing. It is only the actual cost from post office to your doorstep, okay? So just know that up front that shipping is not included when you order. It is invoiced after. And if you want to pay the shipping cost, I will mail your order. And if you don't, I understand. <laughs> well, I don't. But um, anyway, but I will just refund your order because I can't be out those shipping costs. Um, I know they've gotten crazy, crazy around the world. And I don't want you to have to overpay for shipping on anything. So that's that on my website. Let's come down here. All righty. Yes, Diane, I hope everything goes well. Keep us posted in the group. Um, oh, thank you, Faye. I appreciate that. I try. I did have one lady say, I am not paying my shipping. It said that it wasn't included. And, you know, as a small business owner, I understand um, that I could make it easy on myself and just put the shipping cost in. But at the same time, I want you guys to not have to overpay on shipping so that you can spend on products and supplies, right? So I always share with you guys the latest thing that I've done with my membership group. So we did bubbles last month, and then I shared this with you guys a couple weeks ago. Um, and then it was March, and one of our prompts was green. So of course, you've got to have four leaf clovers, right? And then I shared with them how to do some alcohol inks. So this is all on packing tape. And so I just kind of put it all together and then did a page. And you can see on the back the alcohol links just to share different things um, with my members. And then we did green. Um, and then we also did some uh, drawing technique on how to create hash marks, cross hatching, things like that to uh, bring a line drawing into a work of art, whether you add paint to it or not. So. Again, like I mentioned, the end of this month, the last two days, and the first several days of May, 
my membership group will officially be open and I will be sharing a lot with you guys on um, both YouTube and my Facebook page. Okay. <sighs> I take a breath. <laughs> oh, you're so welcome, Brenda. Yes. I, I know some people have a, a problem with it, but at the same time, I, um, I don't want you guys to have to overpay. So more than the products right exactly Kay I totally understand the drawing of the peony was so fun and relaxing thanks Faye I totally agree okay so let's get started so like I mentioned um, the Bisque I want to call it a skip <laughs> it's S-K-E-P um, anyway comes raw so what I did just to save a little bit of time and let's zoom in just a little because I've got some fun things on this design to share with you guys. Super quick, easy way to paint the bee, the skeep, and this little water droplet. I, I kind of wanted to take it to the next level. And so I thought that water droplet would be fun to, um, to share with you guys. So thank you, Heather. What kind of journal book is that? I'm looking for one to pry. Oh, Linda. It is my go-to favorite. Let me pull it back up because it's on the floor. <laughs> um, uh, thank you, Elizabeth. I appreciate that. Okay, so this is my um, Grumbacher. I do sell it on my website. <coughs> Excuse me. Let me just get get a cover so that you can see it. I sell it on my website. You can also find them at Walmart. What I love about these is you can remove the pages, create your design, and put it back in. Now, let me tell you, if you've got a mixed media art journal, and I shared this on uh, a live with my group, but also on, I think here on YouTube and my Facebook on a live, so where you've got these metal things, if your pages don't come out, you can take scissors and snip right between those. And that way you'll be able to pull your page out and put it back in, okay? Um, but this is a great mixed media weight paper um, and all my journals pretty much are that. I switched over from another company many years ago. Okay. Hi, Lori. Oh, thank you, Chris. Yeah, they really are. I don't think I received the notice for shipping yet. You haven't, Linda Safranco, because they'll be shipped tomorrow. Um, and so they'll be weighed and I'll send invoices. No problem, Lucy. So glad you're here. What's the weather like up there um, in higher Georgia than me? <laughs> um, all righty. Love, love, love this journal. Love the quality, the paper quality and the flex. Yes, the flexibility. Being able to remove it from your journal is my biggest thing. So, all right, let's get some palette paper. And I'm using, this is my go-to palette paper. It's the uh, JRC Gray Matters. I get mine on, on Amazon, hoping to hopefully have it on my website soon. Um, but it's my go-to. So what I did on the blank, always, especially on MDF, I prep it with the multi-purpose sealer, okay? Let it dry. If you need to, you can sand it. And then I put a layer of, I wanted to use the new DecoArt 2024 colors. So um, you can get those several places. Let's see if I have right there. Uh, Pinecraft has them. And so does, disregard the last bottom, oh, well, it says the eight inch breadboard because that was for my uh, duck, but CD Wood has the new colors as well. So you can find all the 2024 colors. And I just saw somebody on Facebook yesterday um, say that they found them at Michael's. So do you still, I do, Margaret, I always um, either use Gesso or Matte Medium on my journals. So I just love the way the, the paint can move. So anyway, so this was sealed with multi-purpose sealer. 
and then it has one layer of salted caramel. These cover beautifully. Um, I let it dry, and I did do a little sanding, so you'll see a little variation in color there. Um, but it comes etched with the different uh, lines and stuff. And then we're gonna get to we're gonna get to this. And I saved us a little time by um, transferring my pattern and base coating it on. Again, thank you guys so much to everybody that ordered the e-packet and the surfaces. They, <laughs> I was busy for six hours yesterday uh, packing up orders, so which is awesome. Okay, so I ordered these special kits. Would you bring them? Oh, absolutely, Denise, absolutely. I will have them for sure in Oklahoma, along with so many other fun kits and goodies. Okay, so I have one of my new favorite colors, baby duck, baby duck. Do, 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 do. <laughs> I don't wanna get banned for having a song on here, but anyway, baby duck. And then Asphaltum is gonna be my shading color. I am gonna put a little bit of Snow Titanium White. Again, I'm using DecoArts Americana, mostly. In the e-packet, I did show, though, that there were some colors that are optional. So I get this question all the time. What is the difference between Americana and the Fluid Acrylics? So let me just tell you, when we're done, I'm gonna amp up these colors to the next level using these and show you what a difference it makes, okay? You could just stop at the Americanas, which is fine, but I wanna show you how those fluid acrylics really take it to the, the next level, especially in color. Alrighty, so I'm gonna use a medium mezzaluna brush. This is a blend of stiff and soft bristles, and we are gonna pick up some baby duck and then wipe quite a bit of it off. And I'm just gonna dry brush this, soft circular motion in between those sections. I started to do that and <laughs> quickly stopped because let me tell you, when you do that, you get a defined line. Whereas when you come in with a soft circular motion, your edges are softer, almost billowy like clouds, instead of having that harsh line. So soft little circular motions is gonna give you a pretty dry brush. And again, we're starting out with that baby duck. Hello, Mona. Oh, thank you, Denise. Oh my goodness, my booth at OKC is going to be packed. Um, I'm bringing in more Dynasty brushes. Yeah, there's lots of kits, lots of fun new things, so. I'm home the whole month of May. <laughs> Let me just say that's what I'm gonna be working on between Chattanooga and um, OKC because I have four classes at each convention and uh, booth, so on the trade show floor. Okay, so, and if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, guys, this is the Chattanooga event um, it is the Annual Painting and Craft Expo. You can find their website right there, and they have a catalog. You can go online, and you can either order it, or you can look at the catalog. Um, the other one is OKC Painting Palooza. That is in Oklahoma City this August, and their website is right there with the dates for the convention. Um, again, I have four classes at each one, and both are doing really, really well with signups um, and attendance. So if you've ever wanted to go to a painting convention, I highly recommend you hit one of those, if not both. Okay, now this circle in the center, it just kind of breaks the flow if I stop. So I'm gonna go into it because it's gonna be darker in color, so I'm not too worried about it. Um, Sandy, a suggestion for those going to Chattanooga, pick up the smaller gray palette paper. It will say room with their packing. Absolutely, um, Linda, yes. And they do it in several different sizes. The nine by 12 is my favorite size, um, but you can always cut it in half as well. And bring blue painter's tape, because if you've got a piece of palette paper <laughs> that's just not attached, 
and you're trying to blend on it, it's impossible. So blue painter's tape to, to tape it down would be good. Whew. I don't know what I ate or did, but I have a huge canker sore on the left side of my mouth, um, on my cheek. Okay, so that is the baby duck. But look how dimensional it's already starting to, to take some shape, right? So I'm gonna wipe this off, pick up a little bit of titanium white. You could use some warm white if you don't want it as bright. Wipe off quite a bit of that paint. And I'm gonna start in the center with a small circular motion and work my way out to the left and to the right. We're gonna have shading here. So our shading is going to kind of bring it in and push this forward to give us some dimension. So it's the great thing with color and texture and dry brushing is you really can take the, um, the dimension to another level. In fact, tomorrow in my membership group, I'm doing, it was supposed to be Tip Tuesday, but I will be on my way to a funeral in Tennessee on Tuesday. Um, so we're doing texture. Um, actual texture, implied texture, different ways that you can create texture in your designs. And dry brushing is one of my favorites. Just to get too much like I did there, rub it out with your finger. Um, so Yvonne, yeah, unfortunately, well, unfortunately, someone can send me something from Canada, say Tracy Morrow, and it cost $5. For me to send her the same exact package is going to cost me $20. And it has more to do with the Canadian customs than it does the U.S. Um, many countries like yours in Australia I can send something and the first class first class flat rate starts at like $19. Um, in fact, I shipped something to Patrick in France and it costs less than the same item that I shipped to Canada, which makes no sense. But again, I, I just never want to overcharge my customers. And so I appreciate those that understand that your shipping invoice comes separate. And once it's paid, your order will go out. Okay, so just a little bit of dry brushing on there. And then I will wipe that off. Now, to wash my Mezzaluna brush, if I wanted to switch colors, I would use some hand sanitizer. You can also wash it really well, dry it off, dry it on a paper towel, and it'll be ready to use without a lot of water built up in it. Um, because dry brushing, we don't want a wet brush, right? So I typically use hand sanitizer only because when it evaporates, it's ready to use again. So now let's go to our shading. So I am going to switch to a half inch angle. You can use a three eighths bow squirrel if you want to. Yes, <laughs> Elizabeth, I know. I, I grew up with canker sores my whole life and I haven't had one in a long time. But yes, warm salt water. I will do that later. Okay, so I have some a little bit of water in my brush. Just gonna tap it out. But I'm gonna do, my sweet friend Lana Lamb always has this tip to put a couple water droplets on your palette because then I can come in with the heel and reload with just a little bit of moisture if I need to, okay? So on the toe only, this is an angle brush. It's got a heel and a toe. We'll pick up a little bit of that asphaltum, and I'm gonna work it in on both sides of that brush, and then very loosely. And what I mean by loosely is, I'm just doing like little C strokes. I don't wanna sit here and go, and here, and here, because to me, that just makes too much of a, a pattern. So this way, it's gonna come out a little bit further on some, Maybe not as far on others. You don't want too much water in your brush. If that paint starts to migrate, you need to either rinse it out or just kind of take it off that heel. 
And I like to build my layers, um, floating or not. So I most likely will go over this again. But we're gonna come up this side. And my brush is flat on the surface. If you're on the um, chisel edge of that angle brush, you're gonna get a very defined line. So make sure that you're flat and you're just pulling it almost like you're writing the letter C. A little bit more. And before you go back onto a float, it's always best if you dry it. So let's dry this. Oh, well, Robin, that, that probably just hit the nail on the head because I had an orange. And again, I haven't had a canker sore in a long time, but I bet that orange did it. All right, so that's dry. Just kind of give it that test, touch test. And before you put paint on it, you want it to cool down or it's gonna just grab that paint right off your brush. Okay, I do want this to be a little bit darker. So I'll pick up some more asphaltum. So see how just that, that second layer really just gave it a lot of depth, right? All right, now let's dry that and then we're gonna go in between each section. <coughs> Take the first side of one goes like that. Oh, I've never heard of Listerine. Is that what you mean, Lucy? L Lysine. Hmm. Hello, Tara. Good to see you on. Oh, Diane, I'm so sorry to hear that. Again, keep us posted in the group on your hubby. And I hope his surgery goes well. So I am going to, I could switch. Do I want to stay with this one? Eh, I think I'll switch to a 3 8 And again, it's got moisture in it. So I can get that color to flow easily underneath. And so we're going to come right down here. I'm going to float it right on top of those lines to separate. Our little section. Now, I wasn't going for, you know, basket woven realistic, but I did come back and put, once I got it all done, and just put a couple little lines of asphaltum, again, to, to give the appearance and the look of, but I really was just going for that very dimensional um, shape with the Darker edges, lighter in the center. Okay, now we're getting big, so I'm gonna go back to that half inch angle. You can use a small, um, too small of an angle for a project. So if you're starting to get a line, you might wanna go up a size. If you find it difficult floating with an angle brush to cover that space, or you get to here and it's gone, go up, go up a size. Again, that hole's in the way, so I'm just gonna act like it's not there. And like I said, I already have one done with the pattern on, just to save time. But I wanted to show you all the little steps that I took to get where I had the design on, okay? Now, I do wanna soften this out just a bit. You can always come back and dry brush more highlights on, et cetera. But look how much more dimensional that is, right? How long does it normally take to get something? I've been waiting for over a month for an order and two months for a drawing prize. Um, again, Bonnie from Canada, it, you just never know. I shipped an order to Cincinnati the end of March and she just got it this week um it went to all different states <laughs> um uh, what was that reason to get a bottom of 
gosh, watch them. Oh, I did. There, I see you see it. Um, but Bonnie, reach out to her because Tracy, you know, she'll make it right if you've not gotten your stuff yet. Um, but I know that they have had some issues. Listerine. Oh, okay, yes, yes. <laughs> oh, it's in the vitamins section. Okay, Lucy, I'll check that out. Okay, now from here, I got here. Now I want to show you how I got here. Because after I did it, I'm thinking it just needs a zhuzh of color. It needs to like be amped up. Um, so media line, diary light yellow. You can always come back in and do a wash of, let's say, um, bright yellow, yellow white. But I love this diary light yellow. And let me just show you how that will take it to the next level. Okay. Now I am going to come back in with a little bit of white on my mezzaluna and I wiped it off, but instead of dry brushing this time, I'm just gonna tap it. So just to give it more texture, okay? So oftentimes dry brushing, we get texture, but we take it away if we're doing that soft circular motion. So I'm just going to give it a little bit of texture right here in the center. Again, that hole's in the way. Titanium white, wipe it off, but then dab that texture in just a little. Okay, now it's dry, but I'm reading. Oh, good point, Faye, yeah. I think the post office does not do. Oh, we could get off on that, right? <laughs> on the whole post office stuff. The shady makes a difference, totally agree. Okay, now. Watch this, I'm gonna use that half inch angle. And on the toe, my brush is quite wet. I'm gonna pick up some of that Diary Light Yellow. Now, it is just going to take it to another level in color. So let me just show you that, okay, right? It's like it just got a kiss of honey. Um, the Diary Light Yellow Fluid Acrylic, I do carry these on my website. They are highly pigmented. Don't let the price tag scare you because I have enough on this pal <laughs> palette for all of us on Facebook and on YouTube to use. Seriously, it takes just a little bit. And what I love about it is how it takes that color to the next level. So think of glazes, washes. Um, if you want to amp up your color at all, that right there is gonna do it. Okay, now let's dry that. I'm gonna put it to the side in a second after I show you the center. I love the fluid acrylics as well. <laughs> yes, Pooh Bear is off to the side, right? Too funny. Okay, so all dry. Um, I am going to come in with a little bit of black, and I'll just show you how I did this center. Okay, so uh, number two, flat, number four, flat, whatever you have. A little black and a little asphaltum. And I just, if you have a circle stencil, you can always put that down. But I just followed those lines that were on my, uh, that lasered scored that circle. Okay, and then we will dry that. Yes, I love the transparency of the media line, yes. The fluid acrylics, you guys, probably hands down my favorite paint to paint with. Um, okay, so another layer, too much water. Okay, and then let's dry that. I'll show you how I highlighted the rest, and then we'll move on to um, the piece that I have here that is already prepped to that point with our line drawing on. Um, and it's always nice if you 
print off the line drawing. I like it on either computer paper or vellum. You can cut it to shape, lay it down, and do your pattern, okay? Um, but let's make sure this is dry. I see it's a little wonky here, but not going to worry about it. All right, I'm going to come in with my... Do I have one there, Sandy? Hello. Um, my quarter inch angle. I thought I had my faux squirrel one there, but I don't. Um, so I have my black gold three eighths, excuse me, quarter inch angle. And I'm going to pick up a little bit of baby duck and a little bit of white. Again, you can use warm white, titanium white, whichever you have out. A little bit of water on the heel just to get it to move. Okay. And then I'm going to come right. So think of it like you're doing a C. I need a little bit more water, like a C stroke. So it's just going to give our opening a little bit of a highlight. Okay. You can soften that edge. So I'm going to wipe off my brush and just kind of soften it with the heel or use your finger. Okay. Just to, again, give it a little bit of a highlight, make it look like it's opened. And then on that as well, I used a round brush. <clears throat> How many colors are in the fluid acrylics? Who, Sheila, I will have to uh, get back to you on that. And I can answer your question better on Facebook than I can on, um, on YouTube where it doesn't let me go back into the chat. Um, but they've, unfortunately, they have deleted some but it is an exceptional, exceptional paint. Um, so you can go at decoart.com and look at the selection there. You can also uh, go on my website and look at the colors that I offer. I do have some still in stock that decoart doesn't. Um, they're, they're just exceptional and we're gonna use them. We're using Quinacridone Magenta. I'm gonna show you how I use Payne's Gray, which on any project, pretty much I use Payne's Gray um, on it. And then we'll do a little bit of these colors as well, okay? So with a round brush, and this is a four round, I'm gonna pick up just a little bit of Baby Duck, a little bit of Titanium White, make a little inky consistency, a little more white than Baby Duck. And I just wanted to kind of highlight a little section right there. Now, oftentimes, I don't like where you can see a start and a stop line. So I'll take my finger and kind of soften it out on both sides. And if that's too bright or you're like, ugh, that's so in my face, a wash of either um, salted caramel or diary light yellow, okay? All right, let's move that to the side. Come to our piece that we have here. So I transfer the line drawing. I'm gonna zoom in just a little so you can see. Oh, there's a hummingbird. <laughs> Sorry. Um, squirrel. So my finished piece background with my line drawing on, and then I went over it with warm white, okay? So let's go ahead and just base coat some colors in. I did two things. Again, I wanted to use uh, the new 2024 Decor colors. So I did a little bit of a mixing of these two colors, tea berry, use whatever colors you want. Cherry Merlot, which is gorgeous. I'll put that out. Um, on the leaves, I use a Mr. Bottle of Water to make droplets on my palette. Great tip, Janet, yes. Great tip. Okay. Um, oh, Lorianne, hopefully these hummingbirds will fly up your way in New York. <laughs> New leaf, we're gonna put out for the, and I usually use Plantation Pine um, but I didn't want to have to get a whole nother color out, so I, I did some color mixing. Um, but you could always go back to your tried and true traditional colors. Okay, so I want that round brush, that number four round. I'm going to pick up some new leaf and just go ahead and base coat our leaves, our stems. And again, they have just one coat of warm white. The round brush just lets you get in with that nice sharp tip um, into those 
stems and leaves. These don't have a lot to them. It actually was a really quick, easy uh, design to paint. Got a little leaf right there. It's just all the little details, all the little shading, all the little extras that I tend to do that add more time, but I think add more detail, not to be realistic, but um, maybe just to take it to the next level. All right. And if you've got any white showing, you can always cover that up. Uh, let's dry this. Hello, Loretta. Thank you, Mona. Thanks for um, sprinkling. Sue Pot said, Decorate's website shows 31. Yes, and I also carry the gesso and the um, matte medium, which are my two favorite go-to mediums. And the liquid glass. All right. I never got the January prize. I think our post office has these in them. <gasps> Lucy, from me or from Trace? Let me know. All righty. So... I am going to not have as much water in my brush. It's just slightly damp. This is just going to give me a better second coat. My glass is working. <laughs> um, just kind of on that note as well with my giveaways, what I typically will do is my next slide is going to be next Sunday. So I will do three Happy Mail giveaways, um, and the names will be released next week. I released three today from last live. You guys have until my next live to let me know where you want it shipped to, and if I don't hear from you, unfortunately, it goes back into the stash um, for the next people. So if you're watching you know, a video from six months ago and your name was drawn, <laughs> And you didn't let me know. Unfortunately, I'm sorry. It's gone. Again, it's back in my stash. Oh, Bonnie, I'm so excited to see you at Palooza as well. I will be very, very, very busy. <laughs> in fact, I've already started prepping my services because I have um, a lots of people signed up, which is awesome. Oh, thank you, Cheryl. Okay, so we're gonna let that dry, and then I did a mixture. So again, I'm gonna use that round brush of tea berry and cherry merlot. Again, I didn't want um, pink tulips or just purple tulips, and then I'm gonna leave a little space, okay? So I'm going to just paint the back petals first. Now, when we're painting a flower and you have the back petals and the front petals, um, depending on where your light source is coming from, you will want to make one lighter or darker so that you have dimension and shape. And so for these, I am going to pull that dark down between those petals and down between those petals. Okay. And then, and it's not an exact, it's not one of this, one of this, it's just brush mixed to the color that I was going for, which is just a little bit more on that deeper pink. And then we'll do all the back petals first. When you separate them like that or leave a little bit of space between them, it's just easier to, to see without laying your pattern back down and having to redraw it, so. Give yourself those little guidelines. Okay. Can I see the Cherry Merlot? So, Cherry Merlot, you wanna see it with some white. So, Cherry Merlot, and let's just pick up a little bit of white. You got a beautiful kind of uh, lavender lilac purple. It's a beautiful color. All the 2024 colors to me are just exceptional. Alrighty, so let's dry this and I'm going to get out some other colors. 
make sure I went over everything for you guys. This I... <coughs> And I will share, I did a lesson with my group last year, the year before, on water droplets. Um, I won't go into great detail on them today, but I'm going to show you how I painted mine. Um, but just to show you some of the, I was pulling these cards today. Hello. With what I had shared with my group um, to get those dimensional water drops, which I love to paint. I just don't paint them enough. Okay, so for the leaves, let's get out some um, Mystic Teal. And I'm going to take the Mystic Teal and a little bit of Asphaltum. Remember I said I, I was going to use Plantation Pine because that's my go-to leaf color. But guess what? Mystic Teal and a little bit of Asphaltum is going to give you a color pretty close to it. All right, and then I'm just going to take that on that round brush down the darker side of the leaves. And I'm just going to kind of swipe it with my finger, the darker side of the stem. And that's the leaf as well. So I'll go down that side. Down our stem. And our leaf. One of the best ways to get better at mixing color is to mix color. So if it scares you and you're like, oh, but I want it exactly the same. Um, I'm a firm believer that when you brush mix, you get a variation of color instead of it being cookie cutter straight out of the bottle. And that's just going to give you a more realistic look to your painting. So again, when you finish, do you seal your pieces? I do, Loretta, and I pretty much seal all of them to include my journal pages. Most everything I paint um, is done with Duraclear Soft Touch Varnish. I love the way it feels. I love the way it brings up the color. Um, okay, so looking kind of not so pretty right now, but we're going to come in with our small Mezzaluna brush which, hello, I grabbed and moved. And we're gonna pick up a little bit of white, a little bit of baby duck, work it in on that mezzaluna. So I just kind of circled it around and they're gonna wipe quite a bit of it off. And then I'm gonna dry brush, oop, wiped off too much, Sandy. I'm gonna dry brush some of that on the stems and the leaves. So baby duck. Titanium white. Again, if you've got warm white out, you can use that. Warm white just covers better. Um, it's going to give you some uh, more opaque um, coverage, but titanium white is going to make it brighter. So you might need to use a little bit more titanium as it's not as opaque as warm white. Okay, so we want to come right here on that little flip. And you can get it quite bright. In fact, I am going to come back now with just some white. And just like we did on the, um, the bee skeep, I'm just going to tap it instead of brushing it in. That's just going to give it more texture. I love, love, love the texture dry brushing gives. Okay. Hello, Judy Thacker. Good to see you on. Hello, Sharita. All right. Now, the leaves. I want to take them up a notch. So, again, I'm going to pick up a little bit more white. Wipe it off. I could float the color along the top, but this uh, dry brushing and a wash of green gold on these leaves is going to take it to the next level. Now, if you don't have green gold, you can always come back to your new leaf because new leaf has a really nice yellow content to it. So that will give you a pretty looking leaf. However, I'm gonna to go to green gold. 
let's put, again, I have enough for everybody. <laughs> um, a little dab will do you with this paint. I'm gonna pick up my round. Have fun, Kay, enjoy your burgers. A little bit of green gold on that wet brush. And then I'm gonna brush that right over what we painted. See how it just, oh, it just takes it to another level in color. So my dark is gonna stay dark, but that brighter yellow is just going to pop from that green gold, okay? Now I still have some shading to do, and I, I will do that a little bit later with some Payne's Gray, okay? But for now, just to give you an idea of how those leaves can be amped up with that green gold, I think we're just gonna go ahead and finish the leaves and the stems. All right, so I will go to my quarter inch angle. It does kick it up a notch, doesn't it? I love it. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to that Mystic Teal. So this is on a quarter inch angle. Um, I need to get out some Payne's Gray. Got black out, but black, is harsher than the Payne's Gray. So I have that Mystic Teal, a little bit of Payne's Gray. Oops, too much Payne's Gray. Work that in. You can also use a little Asphaltum if you wanna soften the look, but I'm going to float that down the darker side of the leaf. A little bit on the stem. And then I just, the stems are so thin that if you just kind of put it on and swipe it with your finger, you'll get a nice little shading. On the leaf. And under that leaf. Okay. And then I do think I'm gonna come back with some white and a little new leaf. Just a touch. I didn't get it as bright here as I want it. So I wanted this to be just a little bit brighter. So a little new leaf, a little bit of white. Okay. Just to make that flip stand out a little bit more. Okay. And since I have it on my brush, I'm just going to highlight because one of the last things you want to do when you're painting, guys, is evaluate your lights and your darks. One, if one's off, it's going to make the other look off. So start with your favorite. Maybe it just needs a little bit brighter highlight. Maybe it needs just a little bit more shading. Okay. I haven't seen anyone using the Media Translucent White. Oh, great. So translucent white is really good for those kind of smoky, um, hazy looks. It is titanium white in the media line is more opaque. The translucent is going to give you that very translucent, smoky, cloudy look. I will tell you, I usually water this down and use it the same way. So, all right. Let's go back to our quarter inch angle. And I'm gonna load up some of the um, Cherry Merlot and a tiny touch of Payne's Gray. And right behind those front petals, I'm going to just do a little bit of shading at the base of those back petals. Okay, they're gonna get a little highlight too so that they're not neglected. This one has, let's get a little bit more of that color right down here. A little bit there. Got a little bit here. I didn't, I didn't hit that last time. There we go. Okay, and then tiny, tiny touch of Payne's Gray. And if you're like, oh, that's too harsh, um, asphaltum will work great as well. It's a little bit of shading. Thing is, you have options. Okay. 
and then just kind of soften that out. You can soften it with a mop brush or like you saw me with my finger, just kind of soften that out. Hello, Suzanne. All right. Now, let's go to our round brush again. I'm going to pick up, so I have water in my brush. I'm going to pick up some tea berry and some cherry merlot. I'm just kind of brush mix it like you see me doing on my palette here. And then I'm going to come up to the white and I'm just going to swipe it. Okay. Now, if you're worried, you can always swipe it once on your palette before you go to your piece. But I'm going to start here and I'm going to swipe. Come right back there, pick up that paint, swipe and swipe. So again, tea berry, cherry merlot, back to tea berry, a little bit of white. Swipe and swipe. So see how that gives me a little variegation, some lines in those petals, but I am gonna come back and brighten it even more with some white along the edge. So again, tea berry, cherry merlot, swipe it through a little white. And up here, I'm gonna follow that shape of that petal and down. I just wiped off my brush, tea berry, merlot, back to tea berry, swipe it through the white. You might be able to get, nope, <laughs> two petals. I would reload each time just so that you get that nice variegation of color. Okay. So I'm going to wipe that off. Tea berry, Merlot, back to tea berry, swipe it through the white. And then we'll come here. And it's the shading that we come back and do that really bumps it up. And then also with the fluid acrylics. Oh. Again, I got done with it and I'm like, it needs something. And the fluid acrylics is exactly what I put on it. All right, let's dry that. Aren't those colors pretty together? Again, I didn't want to just do tea berry and I didn't want to just do Merlot. I wanted them to mix but not totally mix for those tulips <clears throat> okay all right now I'm going to come back with um, my quarter inch angle kind of rinse that out pick up a little bit of Titanium white on the toe. If it migrates over a little, that's okay. But what I want to do now is right along, kind of follow that petal. So I'm going to follow that petal, but then come down. Follow that petal and then come down. Okay, so see how it kind of hits that tip of that petal. But as I'm putting it along the top of the, oops, too much water. Putting it along the top of the petal, I'm also slightly sliding on the chisel edge. And then I do like to soften it with my finger if I need to. Okay, but see how much brighter that makes that front section of petals. And then over here. It just gives it dimension. It moves those front petals away from the back. Slide those. Again, sliding on that chisel edge. This one has a little bit of a flip there. And then right along this little petal, just has a little bit of a highlight. And the shading that we'll come back and put there will help give that some dimension as well. I love the new colors, Darlene, don't you? They're so pretty. 
And again, it's, it's like the first set of colors since the pandemic that Tracy Morrow and I've really had a hand in helping um, create. And I think that's why I'm even more proud of them because they are, they are exceptional. Now, if you get too much white, and maybe I'll do it on purpose, like that one, you can come back with um, some tea berry or some cherry Merlot. But what I wanted to do to kind of warm it up was take some of that um, diary light yellow that I put on the leaves, excuse me, that I put in the background um, and bring those onto the flowers. Again, just to add a little bit of warmth. And every time you do that, guys, that little technique right there, it's, you're going to have something um, slightly different because, you know, I'm not bringing down my hand exactly where I brought it down on my original. So, all right, let's come back with our quarter inch angle. And I'm going to wipe it off or you can take a paper towel and dry it. But I want to pick up some white and I'm just going to work it in on the whole brush and then swipe it across my paper towel. And I am just going to very lightly highlight those back petals. I don't want to bring too much attention to them, but I do want you to see the separation in them. And that tiny little highlight will do so. Okay, I'm gonna rinse that. Come back to the Cherry Merlot. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of Asphaltum. Tiny touch of Payne's Gray. Work that in on the toe of the brush only. And I am going to come in very, very lightly and just deepen some of these shadows. I do have one right there I missed. And then in here. All right, now if you don't have the quinacridone magenta, you can always come back with um, alizarin crimson, berry cobbler, you could use the cherry merlot even, but let me just show you how this changes this flower. So just the tiniest dot. We'll just pick up just a little bit on the toe. I'm gonna work that in. Okay, so look at it now. and then what that color does to that flower. It just amps it up, takes it to a new level. They are compatible with all your acrylic paints. You do washes, glazes, you can mix them. I often mix my green with my Payne's Gray to deepen a color. That one needs a little more separation. I think I have, yeah, right there. Let's we'll take that down just a little more. So someone said Hobby Lobby has their new shelf labels up, but no new product yet. We'll soon. That's the, the hard part too, guys, like with the show I just went to, uh, NAMTA, where it shows all the fun new products and everything that are out. Unfortunately, it just takes a while for those to get to the, <laughs> to the stores. Um, or even on DecoArt's website, you know, once those orders start being filled. Okay. So, now let's dry this. Iowa lost. Oh, oh, I'm bummed. Wow, I should have had my TV on. Well, good for South Carolina. They were undefeated the whole year. Okay. <clears throat> now, I could come back, like I mentioned, with a little bit of white on my round brush and just pull some brighter highlights. 
And you might think, ooh, those are too bright, but what's gonna happen next is gonna bring it all together. A little on those back petals. Again, we don't wanna neglect them, but we don't wanna brighten them too much. Oh. Oh, so Bev in Kalamazoo, Michigan says that Hobby Lobby has their new paint colors. Awesome. All righty. Okay, so back to that Diary Light Yellow. Very strong color. Um, and I need just a little, like, the tip of my brush brought over just a little bit of color. I am gonna get a paper towel handy just in case, because again, I don't want it too bright, but I wanted to add just a little bit of warmth to these tulips. So a little bit of that yellow from the background, and then I might just soften it. Again, if you want a little more white, you can come back and add that. Again, just evaluating your lights and your darks. Even with that yellow that's a little wet, it's blending. Oh, I love that. I didn't do that on my original, but I should have. All right. <clears throat> yes, it is so good for women's, especially women's basketball, which doesn't get near the attention that men's basketball does. All right, let's move this to the side. Pretty happy with where those flowers are going. Let's take care of our bee. And then um, we'll do that water droplet. Okay, so let me zoom in real quick. There we go, maybe a little more. And I'll pull my palette over if I need to. Okay, so you guys have seen me um, do like the baby duck or the polar bear, where I pull on the chisel edge of an angle brush. Um, I would do the same thing if the bee were a little bit bigger or you can use an eighth inch angle brush, okay? But what I did was I used my small flat, number two flat, or number four flat, this is a two. Um, and this one doesn't have a great chisel edge. So if you've got a, a small brush and it doesn't have a great chisel edge, it's perfect for this, okay? But I came in with that salted caramel. That's what I did the, um, the Beesky Bond, and just kind of tapped on the paint, left a little bit of a opening there. Okay, we've got black here. And then the lines that are scored on there are just kind of guidelines. Hello, let's let that focus. Kind of guidelines to kind of keep in. But what I didn't want to do is I didn't want to do this. I didn't want it to be smooth. I wanted him to look fuzzy. So just kind of tap on the chisel edge. I'm not pushing real hard. <laughs> Chris, I know they were playing basketball. Okay, Caitlin's amazing all year. Yes. Yes, on many teams, even LSU, the the one girl that was just dominating on the game the other day, um, they all should be just super proud. Okay, so we got black out on our palette. I'm just gonna pick up some of that, work that into the brush. And now this is the thing too, guys, if you have these, um, I sell these on my website, there's the little sponge dauber painter things you could come in and do the antennas because that keeps it from going onto the sides of your surface, which I love. Okay. So 
So we'll do that. But I do want to come in and just tap in a little bit of color here. And then here, again, on the chisel edge, but I want to go into the yellow, off the yellow, into the yellow, off the yellow. So that he looks fuzzy and furry. Okay, so each of these little sections And I don't know about y'all, but here in middle Georgia, we have we have spring-like temperatures. Still a little cold in the morning, but we've got bees. And like I said, I just saw my first hummingbird. Um, they are coming out, and the flowers are in full bloom. Thank you, Chris Avola. You're so sweet. Now, um, I saw this just come up on my messenger. So, yes, I still am giving money to the World Central Kitchen. If you guys saw the news, sadly, they lost seven recently. Um, but any monies from STARS or on my YouTube channel, that money is donated to World Central Kitchen. Okay, helping feed people around the world that are starving. Um, mm, thank you for that message. And uh, yes, you can do that on either or. Okay, so you can come back with another layer of black. I just, I thought that was just the cutest, sweetest little bee. And again, how sweet would that be as a, um, huh, would that be? As a, a random act of kindness pin. Just pop a little pin back on it. Okay, so now we're here. I am gonna come back to, you can use the Mezzaluna. I'm gonna use the number two. I'm just gonna dry it off really well because it's in my hand. Pick up a little baby duck. A little bit of white, work it together, swipe it across my paper towel. And I'm just going, oop, too much, wipe more. This is a great tester when you're dry brushing. If you get too much color there, you know you're going to get too much color on your piece. So I'm going to do a little dry brushing of um, that baby duck in white. If this were a good brush with a great chisel edge, I would not be doing this. I'd use my Mezzaluna. Okay. We can even go on that black. A little bit of a highlight there on the antenna. Okay. So just that, how dimensional he already looks. Okay, let's get out a little bit of Stormy. So I have a little bit of Stormy. Brand new color. I'm going to put a little bit of cobalt teal hue. Again, there are no Americana colors that mimic these colors exactly. Again, because these are very uh, fluid and transparent and they don't have the solids that Americana does. But this is just going to amp up that blue. So if you don't have this, you can use uh, Bahama blue. Okay, and make sure you get rid of these things, guys, because your paint will not close your bottle tightly. And these are too expensive for that to happen, so. All right, let's go back to our 3 8 angle. Thank you, guys. All right, I'm gonna use a little bit of the um, Payne's Gray first, just to separate. So I'm gonna separate between the wings. dry that. And you can draw veins and things on the wings. I didn't on my original. I just kind of left him more um, plain. Okay, we'll pick up a little bit of that Stormy now. And I'm just going to kind of brush it right. So I'm doing like a little C. Okay, very loose float of color right at the base of the wings. Oops. Right at the base of the wings. Okay, and then let's dry it. 
And you're probably, why? Why do both? Why do Stormy and then Cobalt's heel hue over it? Because when you layer colors on top of each other, you get incredible um, depth and looks that people are like, how did you do that? Um, instead of just leaving it at the one color, okay? So, you know, being a painter that, that loves to layer, make sure it's not hot, that cobalt teal hue, again, it's just going to add, see how it just amps it up, that side versus that side. All righty. Isn't that color pretty on the wings, Lorianne? I agree. But again, taking it to the next level with that cobalt teal hue. And look, that right there, <laughs> we could all use. A little goes a long way. All right, I am gonna come back in with my number two flat. Let's get some clean titanium white. I'm gonna load it up, wipe it off, load it up, wipe it off. And I am gonna come back again with a little bit brighter highlight. And on the antenna. Okay, and then on that left side, when I first started painting it, I wasn't sure if he was going to be on the left or the right, um, but I knew I wanted flowers on it. So actually, I did paint him where everything was on the the right side, and then I had to change it. So um, the pictures in the packet will show you that. That so a little asphaltum. We just want to give him a little more depth. So a little asphaltum along that left side. And then he's ready to go on your piece, okay? Now, let's go to our cast shadows first, and then I will go on to the, um, the water droplets. So typically I'll use my number two flat. Let me get that rinsed. Tiny, tiny touch like the tiniest touch of Payne's Gray. See there on my palette where I'm mixing that? The tiniest touch, that's way too much. So you would need water to pull just a little bit of that color. And basically I have a little cast, oops, got rid of too much. Little cast shadow here. I think I will darken that up so you guys can see it. I like to go next to the stem without being right at the stem. Again, it just lifts your, your piece up. Stop short of that tip, especially here. I'm gonna go here, pick up a little more. So on the left side of those leaves, because my kind of my light is hitting here, I will do those stems. I'm gonna darken that so you can see it. Okay, it's a little too dark, so we'll soften it. But we just want to give a little bit of a shadow. Okay, let's come over here real quick two, I will do, just on this card, that has got paint on the side of it. Um, so if you're unfamiliar with doing water droplets, you can always come in and do a little circle or a little teardrop, okay? Just kind of draw it. Now, I'm gonna do this a little bit bigger so that you can see. So that's more of a teardrop which I have on my piece, which is more like an oval, okay? So coming in with your angle brush, a little bit of Payne's Gray, and I'm going to go up and over. So think of like an upside down U, 
an upside down U. And then, so this time I'm on the inside of the oval. This time I'm gonna be on the outside of the oval. That's gonna be my shading right there, okay? Now, I do like some dark, good shading on a water droplet. So I would come back and do that again, okay? Now, depending on where your light source comes from, you might have your light impact from here. So you'll have a dot or two, okay? And then here, you'll have a little bit of white where that light is coming out, okay? So looking at the water droplet here, see how you can see the top part, the shaded part underneath with a little bit of that light that's gone through the water hitting your leaf, okay? Now, whatever you're on, like in this case, the leaf, the inside of this is going to be the color of, of what you're doing. Um, so as long as it's transparent and you've got a hazy look, you're gonna have a water droplet perfect every time, okay? <clears throat> Bye, Peg. Thank you, guys. Okay. So again, back to that Payne's Gray. And if I were going to be doing more of a teardrop shape, I still would come up here. Shadow there, okay. Maybe even a little bit more there. Okay. And I could come in with a little bit of white if I need to fix that up. All right, so I love painting water droplets. They add so much to a piece, right? Totally agree. Okay, now this one's quite small, so I'm gonna zoom in. Let's zoom way in so that you can see. Okay, so I'm gonna to go to my quarter inch angle because I have very small water droplet. Um, another tip, if you've got a white pencil, like a white chalk pencil, or even, oh, do I have that one? I do. Um, this General's white chalk pencil, I love. You can always kind of drop in the shape of what it is that you want to do because it's going to dissolve and go away, okay? But hopefully that will help you see where I'm putting this water droplet. So I'm going to go up and over. Let's get a little more paint. Up and over. Down and over. And I got a little too much Payne's Gray in there. So I just took the heel and wiped it away. And I'm not too fussed about this shadow because I am gonna come back with some white but right there, just those two strokes, an upside down U and a U. One's on the inside of the water droplet, one's below the water droplet. Now you could come back with your gel pen, but of course gel pens are not permanent. So you'd have to um, use a workable fixative. So I'm just gonna use paint, okay? Now I will come back in and do a little bit of a highlight. And again, I'm gonna use the heel to kind of soften that look. A U stroke on the water droplet. And again, using that heel to soften it out. And then right below it. So right kind of at the impact, just a little bit of white. Okay, and then I'll come back in with a little dot where it hits. Okay, now up close, kind of looks like a hot mess, right? <laughs> uh, but let's zoom out just a little bit. Oops, let's zoom way in. Hello. Okay, now this one, have a little bit more of that white up here. A little there and a little there, just so that light 
impacts the water and goes out. Okay, so this one just needs to be amped up a bit. So a little more white here. And if the um, Payne's Gray is too harsh for you, you can always use a dark green instead of that. You can use a darker color of the whatever is um, the water droplets on. So you could use um, plantation pine or a black green um, to, to make that water droplet. Okay, so finishing touches. Hello, Erin Reed. So good to see you on. All right, let me zoom out. Okay, so I typically do not get my mezzaluna brushes wet until I'm done. When I'm done with them for the day, I, again, I'll wash the paint out with hand sanitizer, and then I wash them with, um, oh, General Pencils soap cleanup stuff. So, but what I want to do is I do want to do a little splatter, not the way I normally do splatter. So I'm going to get that brush really, really wet and pick up some white paint, almost like the fly specking that you probably have seen done um, with a toothbrush. But now what I want to do is I'm going to just flick that. And it just gives the tiniest speck of splatter. I didn't want too much. And of course, wherever you, it is that you don't want it, you need to take it away while it's wet or it's there forever. So maybe you don't want it on those petals or as much on the leaves. Okay, and you'll be able to take that away. So let's kind of put this together with our finished one here and the be in place. Again, always evaluate your lights and your darks if you need to bump something up in color. Um, these little lines right here, I came back and added them like I mentioned with the round brush, if I can find me round brush. And a little bit of asphaltum, tiny touch of Payne's Gray. And they're just like a one, two. One, two, one, two. Just tiny little hatch marks. Again, to give the appearance that this bee skeep is, um, skep, skeep, I say it wrong every time, uh, that it's woven, okay, without getting into, you know, doing a bunch of weaving strokes and stuff. So, anyway, love just that little extra touch. Here and there. When you're done, all those lovely colors on your palette would make an awesome background journal page. You're so right, Sue Potts. I will definitely be doing that. Um, again, if you've not found the um, 2024 colors, you can find them on pinecraft.com. They also have the new Deco Art Deco Earth bundles. Um, you can also get the bundle on um, decoart.com. And then the other place is at CD Wood. That 8 inch breadboard is from the baby duck that I did last live. Um, but they also have the new Americana colors. And then just check your you know local stores and stuff, um, guys. And hopefully they will have them soon. Um, but just a quick little recap starting with something that's plain, <laughs> laser cut, flat, one dimensional, and taking it to a, you know, it, it just looks like it curves, right? Um, this is the great thing about paint and how it can transform something. So, um, and then how cute would those be? Little random act of kindness pins, and you can go to the Facebook page and follow that uh, random act of kindness, and Tracy has provided a little card that you can pin them to, so that you can uh, give those away to people and you know just extend um, a little kindness, um, a little smile, a little joy um, from something that you've created and given. So anyway, um, I've been using those paper palettes and having fun smearing the leftover paint and creating backgrounds, right? 
um, Stockade in Canada has the colors. That is so awesome, Sue. So Stockade in Canada, guys, has the new Americana uh, 2024 colors and the Deco Earth colors. Now, I will be sharing on my next live with you guys. Um, so a couple things. So I know I've shared with you the uh, the Deco Art, Deco Earth paints. They, they are right there. Um, again, these are eight ounce bottles, but you can get them in two ounce bottles on decoart.com. Uh, and there is a discount code for you. Up until the end of May, you can use that discount code one time and get 20% off, all right? Um, but I did this at NAMTA for my workshop. Absolutely loved it. We did a color wheel, but I'm gonna be sharing with you a little bit more about Deco Earth on our next live. And then also one of their new products that's not out just yet. Um, so I don't want to share too much about it. <laughs> um, but love color because I don't have all of it yet. So I can't share everything. But I have been testing it for almost a year now for them. But love color. So if you're familiar with the um, liquid glass, these jelly drops are like tinted liquid glass. You can use them for sun catchers, you can use them on acetate, you can use them on uh, wax paper and then peel it off when it's dry. Um, again, this is on a paper mache box. They have a nice um, stiffness to them. They're not sticky um, like some glue dot type thing products can be. This isn't a glue dot, it's a, it is paint. Um, and it's just beautiful and nice. And then they have the neon confetti glitter, which, I used on my um, one of my laser cut dragonflies. But see that on the body? So on the body is the jelly drops because it's translucent. And then on the wings, I did the neon confetti glitter, which glows in the dark and is black, black light reflective. Oh, so cool. In fact, I should order a black light so I can show you. <laughs> Uh, but if you missed my video from Creativation, check that out. Another person, real quick, just because I saw her name in the comments again, Erin Reed. Um, thank you so very much. If you're still here, share your YouTube channel with everybody. She is just a powerhouse and such a dear, sweet friend. Love her immensely. Uh, she usually gets all my demos and um, videotapes me while I'm at NAMTA because I'm busy and I don't have time to do it. Um, but she's got some great... Um, videos from Creativation this year that you're not going to want to miss. So again, E-R-I-N-R-E-E-D. So on YouTube, go check her out, go follow her, subscribe, hit that bell so that you know when she's going to come. She does everything from painting to crafts to home decor to um, card making, just everything. So she's fantastic. Okay. Thank you, Yvonne. I appreciate that. <clears throat> oh, thank you, Miguel. Yes, you're going to have to come to Creativation one year. So, <coughs> can I have stores as I can get where? Oh, yes, absolutely. And stop. Oh, thank you so much. Chris Avola just put that on um, Facebook for Erin Reed. Erin Reed makes. Um, but check her out. She's just amazing and always so supportive of me. So, um, Yes, guys, if you're looking for the paints, again, hopefully you can find it in Canada or wherever you are. I know we've got viewers and watchers from all over the world. So um, thank you so very much for being here, for supporting my channel. Um, my members, I will see you guys tomorrow. We've got a great lesson. I know many of you will be watching the eclipse, which is going to last four minutes maybe in your area. Um, but we're going to touch on some things to create texture, implied, and... Um, not implied. So anyway, y'all get out those brushes, get out that paint, do something creative. Um, again, random act of kindness pins, something that fills your cup and gives you joy. Um, and if you can share it, that would be awesome too. So bought the blue paint puck you showed. Did you, Debbie? <laughs> I was kind of hoping they would give me the green one, but they weren't giving anything away. So um, yes, Erin Reed is amazing. So okay, guys. Members, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful week. Again, y'all be creative. If you're not feeling it, you're not in the mood, you haven't painted in a while, pick up a surface, base coat it, 
that momentum is going to get you going to do something else, okay? okay. To everyone that ordered this, thank you so very much. Um, those are going out tomorrow. And again, for the rest of this week, two extra bees are going out with all orders and a really cute, cool, small, mini uh, color wheel stencil that I created. All right, you guys, have a good one. I'm going to leave you right here. <laughs>